Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to everyone. Uh, so I'm Sebastian Ricci, I'm a banana breeder. I worked uh, both on dessert export banana and on cooking banana, especially plantain, uh, the last 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, so I will present to you uh, our result on QTL detection uh, linked to fruit quality traits. Um, so this work, uh, was the subject of the PhD thesis, which was successfully defended in October by Stella Viaviani. Uh, and I hope uh, I, I will be quick. So just to begin some background elements about banana breeding, we have some challenges and objectives. So the challenges uh, are to develop improved varieties to contribute to sustainable production. Uh, so without pesticide or any chemical uh, for production, and we have to, to take into account some environment, environmental constraints, uh, including the best actual and emerging, the supply chain's expectations, as a and the consumer's demands, notably fruit quality. Uh, so our objective is to create and select new varieties of dessert and cooking bananas. So for dessert banana for exports, uh, the most important traits are resistance to main diseases, uh, and particularly um, black, leaf, black, leaf, uh, black cigatoka and the fusariosis, and especially the tier four fusarios, uh, which is very important at this time, and the fruit quality and productivity. Uh, for domestic markets, uh, we also have to work on resistance. Uh, to make to the, these diseases, but a little bit more, uh, less, excuse me, uh, on the supply chain problems because uh, uh, there are less transport. And we, uh, we, we aim to diversify the, the, the variety for production. And for plantain type cooking bananas, uh, we work mainly on robustness on tolerance to pests, but more um, weevils and nematodes, and the fruit quality uh, adapted to processing. So what are our constraints or barriers for banana breeding? Uh, uh, so yes, no, first the, the global strategy. So we are working uh, with two main species uh, in banana, Acuminata and Balbiziana species, subspe with species, and with a lot of subspecies in the Acuminata one. So uh, the goal is to produce some triploids hybrids, um, but we are working with diploid uh, parents. So <clears throat> we have to, to perform uh, chromosome doubling step before final cross. Uh, and so we choose a good diploid uh, parent uh, with a lot of favorable traits, uh, depending uh, on the aims uh, of, the, uh, of the breeding. Uh, and we, we perform a chemical treatment with colchicine to perform chromosome doubling. And we can uh, cross this new tetraploid uh, with another diploid to obtain triploid hybrids. Uh, we also have a pre-breeding step at diploid level, uh, even in Acuminata subgroups or not in Balbiziana subgroups. So now I will talk about the, the barrier of the constraints for banana breeding. Uh, so the consumed bananas have no seeds um, because it's very difficult to eat uh, fruit with seeds. I hope you see the pointer. So in the left, uh, at the left uh, of the pictures, you can see a wild uh, fruit with a lot of seeds inside. And uh, uh, in the right part, uh, it's a Cavendish fruit. Uh, so you can see if you have too much uh, seeds, it's difficult to eat it. So we have to work with, uh, with cultivars with very low fertility. So it's quite difficult to make crosses with that. We also have to work with various ploidy level, as we still show. 
so diploid, triploid, or tetraploid uh, parents. Um, we have high level of heterozygosity, hetero, heterozygosity, excuse me. Uh, so genetic and structural heterozygosity, um, which, are, which could be a problem to, to, to have good uh, results after crossing. And we have a lot of traits to group in a unique hybrid, which is uh, also a, a real problem for us, to group all these traits in um, only one step. So it's, it's, it's important for us to increase knowledge on genetic basis and transmission of this trait, and especially on fruit quality traits. So to optimize banana breeding, excuse me, it's a mistake, it's in French. So to optimize the parent cho choice and uh, the crossing, our crossing uh, patterns, and to facilitate and accelerate selection process uh, for example, via marker-assisted selection. So the objective of this study is to understand functional and sensorial fruit quality traits, expression and transmission uh, in the diploid and triploid genetic contexts. Uh, and I will only talk about the diploid contexts today. So we have two steps. So first, uh, we have to study what are the traits segregating in the population. So to study the variability within the population for each trait and the heritability, uh, what that means, uh, how a trait is transferred from a parent to uh, the hybrid. After that, uh, we have to study the genomic regions that are linked to these fruit quality traits. So the, to, to detect these uh, QTLs. And uh, for that, we have to create a genetic map and after to perform the QTL detection. So um, food quality traits phenotyping is really time consuming and very difficult. So we cannot work on big population. And so we cannot uh, perform genetic association uh, analysis. G was, for example. So we worked on a diploid segregating population uh, that was uh, created by crossing Pizang Madiou, uh, which is a sweet dessert banana uh, used as female and Galeo used as male. Uh, Galeo is a cook more cooking banana. We obtained 164 diploid hybrids. Uh, we plant them in three randomized plots and we use parental tree as control on each plot or block. The field transfer uh, was performed from January to December 2014. 14, so just to show you that it's a long-term uh, study. And uh, the plantation of the plots in two and plots three were done using plant circus from uh, block one because it was very difficult to multiply uh, in vitro uh, some hybrids. So we have to use uh, circles. So we have some time lag between crop cycle and hybrid flowering time. Uh, what could be an advantage or disadvantage? And so if you don't know, uh, crop cycle for banana tree is uh, between six to nine months. So first we have to select the quality trait we, we will work on. So yeah, I'll show you the first list uh, we have done to, uh, to, 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 to work on. Um, after that, we choose to to, to work only on a part of uh, this trait because it was too complicated to phenotype for all the traits and to, to, to have some lyophilis samples for eventual future analysis. Uh, so we perform some uh, measurement for all these traits. So for example, uh, finger drop, uh, which is uh, the, a problem for banana uh, commercialization because the fruits uh, are not staying all together. 
And uh, so as you can see there, and uh, the pedicels is broken. And so we test this trade by using um, an adapted uh, penetrometer. The peel bruising is uh, a re uh, reaction of the, the peel after shock. Uh, so as you can see, you have some bruise, some browning of the peel, but it's uh, made by an impact. And we taste it by um, something developed by Christophe Bigot uh, when he was in, my, in French West Indies. Uh, so uh, if you want more details, we can talk about it later. Uh, the peel apple partners was uh, tests by using a penetrometer, uh, and we can with one test we can have three different um, value: the fruit firmness, the peel hardiness, and the pulp firmness uh, using different point or, or slope uh, or, uh, of the of the curve. Peel cracking was also studied because uh, it's also a problem if you want to, to sell fruits like that, uh, at least for export banana. And also peel browning. So when we, you, you touch the fruits, the, the peel uh, will become, become brown uh, really fast. So that's what we wanted to do. And also, so we, we want to, to work on pH and uh, dry matter content. Uh, but we only have enough results for finger drop, for pH, peel and pulp hardness, and dry matter content to perform QTL analysis because we, we had to face uh, some uh, phenotyping problems during uh, our study uh, for the other traits. So we have to, to, to adapt the phenotyping process uh, uh, when we we try we we're performing phenotyping and and so we don't have enough data at this time to perform QTL analysis. So we choose to to phenotype these traits during fruit fruit ripening. Excuse me, from day zero when uh, we we induce the ripening by ethylene treatments. Uh, to day seven. So for DMC, for dry matter content, we have three points of measurement, ID one, three, and seven. For the pulp pH, uh, we made a measurement each, at each day of uh, kinetics, and also for pulp fir uh, firmness and pillar hardiness. And for finger drop, we only study between day four and seven. And all of this study was performed in French West Indies in Guadeloupe. Uh, at the Sirat station of Capestabelo. So just to show you some uh, results of traits expression. So I, I show you result only for pulp uh, pH, pulp firmness, pulp firmness, and dry matter content. Uh, to so as you can see, uh, we have a lot of viability within the population. Uh, as uh, it was shown by the standard error, uh, and a, a, a stability between cycles. You can see uh, for all the traits, it's quite similar between cycles. So we have enough uh, viability to perform uh, genetic analysis, and the trait seems to be stable enough to, to be used, uh, to use all the, the data together. So when we study the variance decomposition, so here uh, you, for people who could be interested, uh, this is a linear mixed model we use to analyze, analyze the data and to calculate the blobs, the best linear uh, and predicted uh, the blobs, excuse me. Uh, but what is important is um, that we, are, we have for all traits a good part of uh, genotypic effects. So the traits are uh, gen genetically uh, controlled. Uh, but with a lot of variation, you, we can see that for dry matter content, we have 61% of viability that could be explained by genotypic effects but only 12% for pulp firmness. Uh, for this trait, uh, it's quite something that was 
Stilnions because uh, the, the fruit firmness is uh, really impacted, for example, by the altitude. Uh, so it's something that is not uh, exceptional. So all the genotypic effects are significant, but also all the inter interaction effects are also uh, significant. Uh, so after that, we, we have calculated the broad sense irritability, just to show that uh, our traits were irritable. So the best one was obtained for dry matter contents uh, and also for pH and peel hardness, which is consistent with uh, the results uh, that we just uh, have seen, and the less, the, the, yes, the less uh, important result is for film fairness also. So, just some result of dynamic ketal detection. Uh, so, how did we perform that? The population was genotyped by uh, GBS, genotyping by sequencing. Uh, we have obtained uh, more than uh, around 20,000 SNPs that could be used for genetic mapping. And so we built two parental maps, uh, for one for Pizang Madu, one for Galeo. So the Galeo maps, for Galeo maps, we obtain 11 linkage group uh, as expected, because it's the number of chromosomes in banana. But for Pizang Madu, we only obtain 10 uh, linkage group. So there is uh, one chromosome perhaps uh, missing. And that could be linked to the presence of a reciprocal translocation in Pizang Madu that has been shown by Martin and Al. Uh, there are a lot of recipro reciprocal translocation in banana. And uh, in Madu, uh, especially, uh, there is a presence of uh, uh, reciprocal translocation between chromosome one and seven. So it could be some association between these two chromosomes. And that's why we have only, only 10 linkage group uh, and not 11 as expected. So now the QGL ma mapping approach, just to, to show you that we have uh, three, three steps of detection, because um, as we have seen, we have, uh, major impact of uh, the interaction between genotype and, and environment and cycle crop, crop cycles, excuse me. Uh, so the first step was performed on the whole data set day by day of food ripening, so including all the crop cycle. Uh, and we, have, we added another step where the QTL detection was, was done per cycle using the data per cycle separately. And after that, we, perf we perform a meta-analysis using the result from the two first steps uh, to have some meta-QTLs. But I will only talk about results of step one today. So the number of QTL we detected. So we have a lot of QTL for each trait and a total of 36 detected QTLs. Uh, so, some QTLs were detected uh, for two, between two and four days of the kinetics, because I have said we perform QTL detection each day, for each day of kinetics, and some were detected uh, all along, uh, all along the, the kinetics. So, I've, if you remember, uh, for some traits, we didn't have more than three or four uh, points of an analysis, so we can't have QTL for more than four days. So most more important, the major QTL that was detected. So uh, major QTLs are QTLs are genomic regions that could explain more than 15% of the variability uh, that was observed. Uh, so it's an interesting QTL, we, we can say, and the major one are are explaining more than 25% of the viability. So have you seen, we, we could have uh, interesting QTL for all straits, uh, excepted pill hardness, and major QTL for pulp pH, pulp fairness, and dry matter content. So the, the, the organoleptic quality traits. Just to show you that this QTL was, we, we are, 
all over the, the genome uh, for all the traits. So in red, we, we have the pulp pH QTLs, in green, the pulp firmness QTL, in blue, the dry matter content QTL, uh, in purple, the finger drop QTL. So for finger drop, we have only two QTLs, uh, but uh, we don't perform so many analyses on that. And in yellow, peel hardness QTLs. So just to show you that we can have, accepted on, on chromosome two, we can have QTLs on all the, the chromosomes. And if you might uh, make a focus on the linkage group one seven, so uh, due to the, uh, the, the, the translocation, uh, something interesting is that we have two major QTLs on this one. So the major QTLs uh, linked to pulp pH, pulp acidity, uh, with around 15% of the variability explained, uh, was uh, found on this 1-7 uh, uh, linkage group. And for finger, finger drop also, the, the more important QTL, uh, which explain 19% uh, of uh, variability, is also located on this, on this linkage group. So it's quite uh, very interesting to see that at, at optimum ripeness, uh, this structure is linked to a higher pulp pH, which is an indicator of sweeter dessert banana. So could be important for dessert banana breeding and a decreased sensitivity to finger drop, uh, which is, that is what we are looking for. Okay, so now to conclude and to summary all these results. Um, so we have uh, obtained high variability and irritability for all the traits. So this trait could be a good, uh, good to, 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 be, to be worked on breeding programs. So breeding and pre-breeding should be permitted to improve these traits. We look we have mapped the first QTL links to banana fruit quality. And if you're interested, you could have more details on the paper uh, that was uh, published in Science Articulture. Uh, we can have major QTLs mapped for each organoleptic fruit quality trait for pulp fairness on chromosome six, for dry matter contents on chromosome nine, and for pulp pH on chromosome one T7. And a promising QTL. Uh, was mapped for fing finger drop resistance on chromosome 1T7. The impact of the 1-7 Maduk translocation uh, could be really interesting to work on because, okay, it could, it, it, it could cause a lack of recombination on pisong Maduk chromosome 1. So it's not possible to reduce the confidence interval for the detected QTL. And it could be a problem for us to use uh, this QTL for marker assisted selection. Because we, we have, to, normally we have to, to work with a really strong uh, uh, linkage between a marker and the traits. It could also reduce the genetic mixing during the pre-reading. But it could also be an advantage because if you don't have other uh, bad traits on this chromosome one, you could use any chromosome one marker to, to perform mass. And uh, it's also really interesting to see that we have detected a major QTL for two important traits on this uh, linkage group. So pH and uh, finger drop resistance. And also Pizang Madu is genetically closely related to Cavendish and Grossmichel uh, cultivars, as it was shown by Martin et al. Uh, so these results could be very useful for Cavendish reconstructive breeding strategy uh, in the frame of uh, banana dessert uh, uh, breeding program for uh, dessert banana for export. 
So what's next now? Uh, we have to validate our results in other genomic contexts. So we can use breeding prevailing population on or uh, work on natural diversity in collection. Uh, we can also compare with GEOS, uh, GEOS results. Uh, we will continue QTL detection uh, for other fruit quality traits, as for example, peel bruising, peel browning, or perhaps peel cracking, because uh, we are still going on to genotyping for these traits. And uh, we will we will try to, to develop some methods to use these uh, results for triplet breeding. So we have to check if uh, these major QTLs detected uh, in a diploid context could have the same effects in a triploid context. Oh, there is something wrong. So we will perform the same study on other population, on triploid population, uh, using Pizong Madu as tetraploid genitals uh, to, to obtain triploid progeny. So just uh, to show you that it's a really hard work with strong uh, partnership. So there are a lot of people involved in these results uh, for molecular biology and genetics, for bio bioinformatics, for the phenotyping, that is perhaps at this time the most difficult point to have a good phenotyping uh, data. Uh, and also a lot of uh, funding to support this project. So I hope uh, all I said was understandable. And uh, thanks for your attention. As if you have any question, um, I'm here to answer, answer to it. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you very much. So I remind uh, colleagues that you are not part of RTB Foods, but you are a geneticist and a breeder at CIRAD Montpellier. And you are part of Hannah's team, Hannah, who is leading the work package for RTB Foods work package for. So thank you for this very detailed presentation and for this investigation on the genetics of banana fruits. And thanks for sharing the preliminary and very promising results with us. So it's really interesting to discover a slightly different approach than the one adopted in RTB foods with, however, very close goals, even if on a different crop, let's say, um, and with evident similarities regarding the targeted quality traits. So it's uh, very interesting. Uh, so I open the floor for questions. So feel free to raise your hand, uh, colleagues. Uh, there are already questions in the chat box, so I will go through these questions, there's a first from, uh, from Dominique. Dominique is asking, why did you choose to cross a banana dessert with a cooking banana? Why um, haven't you chosen two dis banana desserts? Okay, so at the beginning of the study, um, we plan to work on both um, on quality, on food quality traits, both for desserts and for cooking bananas. So for example, uh, dry matter contents or uh, perhaps, um, excuse me, uh, so dry matter content, contents is very important for, for, for cooking banana. So we think that uh, use uh, a cooking banana could uh, help us to have higher, higher level or at least more viability in the protein. So that's why. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Sebastian. Another question from Dominique. And then, Dominique, if you want to ask something more, uh, if, uh, I will let you uh, speak directly to Sebastian. So your question, Dominique, is the, did you use a sensory panel to characterize the organoleptic quality traits of your fruits? No. Uh, it was too difficult to, to test uh, 150 hybrids, different hybrids, uh, using, uh, using a sensory panel. Uh, so no, it was not possible for us. It could be interesting, but it was not possible. Okay, Dominique, do you want to add something to your questions? Thank you, Sebastian. No. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. 
And, uh, because I know that in Guadeloupe you have a sensory panel, and uh, yep. my question is why why did you don't use it? But if the number is too big, really. But I think you have also very bad tests, no? For the sensory panel, is not something easy to to evaluate, or or are they all? Yeah, good? <laughs> uh, you, you have to use um, a trained panel to 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 perform such studies. So it's difficult to 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 to, to ask people the same the same five or ten yes five people five or ten people. Uh, to test to taste uh, 115 hybrids and uh, to have some uh, uh, between two and three replicates for each hybrids and so on so no it's it's really hard to, to perform and uh, Sebastian the difficulties also is to to maintain a, uh, a train panel for a long time in the study it's about three years about yeah so uh, yeah, between uh, three and five years yes so perhaps uh, the, the train panel uh, some of panelists uh, would be not here for all the experiments so we can have uh, uh, var variability and variation in, in the in the answer so it's not so easy to uh, mm -hmm. uh, to do with a train panel for for this uh, long time and with uh, a lot of uh, products. Okay, thank you. I see that Didier, before going to your uh, questions, Christoph, I see that Didier is raising his hand. Maybe it's directly linked to this. Didier, please feel free to ask your question. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Sebastian, for your nice presentation. Uh, I would like to to, to have more information about the, the QTL that you identify. You indicated that you identified uh, one QTL for firmness and uh, a promising one for, for finger drop, something like that. Yep. And, um, I would like to know if uh, you analyze in deep these QTL and identify putative genes that could be involved in this uh, in this criteria. Uh, yes, that's something we, we try to do. Um, so, something I, I didn't. Uh, uh, I, I, could you just see when I put it? Okay, the same. Yes. Uh, so something uh, I have to, to, to say also that the QTLs we, we have mapped uh, have uh, often um, large uh, confidence intervals. So there, there could be a lot of genes under these intervals, but we tried to, to look for um, some candidate genes. So yes, we have, uh, we have found some candidate genes that could be linked to Functional um, uh, pathway linked to to a lot of different uh, different channels. Uh, if you want more details, you can just look at the paper because uh, there are a lot of, of results on that, and there are a lot of uh, different. Um, uh, okay, how can I say that? Um, phys phys physiological uh, channels that were uh, uh, studied. So, for example, we have some some genes linked to the acids uh, synthase, but also to ethylene response, or uh, and so on. So there are a lot of diversity also uh, on the the genes family we have found. Uh, in the confidence interval of these QTLs. Hope I answer the que question. Okay, thank you very much, Sebastian. Let's move to another uh, question from Christophe. Um, do you think that the, the, the part of uh, residual variability that is shown on slide 12 uh, includes environmental factors? Certainly, it, it, it will include uh, environmental factors, but not only perhaps. Uh, 
depending depending what you uh, you put under environmental factors if you're only talking about uh, climate or, or something like that uh, i think it's not only that because we can have also some viability due to uh, the repetition uh, perhaps we have a diverse um, uh, of people uh, performing uh, the the tests so perhaps there is an impact on the results so i think it's not only uh, environmental factors that are uh, under this high part of viability is that clear christophe or? yes yes i i understand you yes okay so yes, I think the residual uh, include environmental factors, but not only. Anyway, uh, about uh, environmental factors, we have just uh, seasoned the climate because uh, you, you work uh, only on the same uh, location. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, perhaps. Um, Sorry. Yes, because perhaps some we have harvesting the the benches in different seasons uh, all along the year. So it could be, it could be. Yeah. But can you can you show the slide uh, twelve? Yeah. Just, I was trying uh, to. Uh, I was very surprised. Yeah. That, that's one. Um, hello. Yes, I was very surprised that uh, finally for dry matter content. Uh, the residual is very low, and the uh, genotype, genotype is very important uh, uh, in the variation of dry matter pattern. Because yes, but on, yeah. uh, on some uh, variety in the uh, in environment, I found uh, more impact of, of the season, of the location uh, on dry matter content. But uh, okay. Um, I think also that pulp firmness and dry matter content are linked. So indeed, it could be surprising, but yeah, that's it. Yeah. For me, it's not surprising that pulp firmness is really impacted yeah. by environmental conditions because it was still published that uh, banana that has grown in, at different uh, altitudes have different uh, pulp firmness. And for dry matter contents, yes, it seems to be more stable. Yeah. Okay. So my, my second question was, uh, have you begun to validate the QTL you found uh, for pH, firmness, and uh, dry matter content on new hybrids? And I mm, think you, not, you mentioned yeah. it in your conclusion. Yes? Yeah. Not at this time, because uh, these results are... So it's, uh, these are really new results. So we have to perform uh, some genotyping uh, on new hybrids or new population, um, or to perform some quality characterization on hybrid uh, for, for which we have some genotyping data, uh, but not, not at this time. It's something we want to, to test, perhaps on a triploid hybrid, for example. Or for on on some of the parents of our breeding platform, we can test, but we have to perform some uh, some molecular tests. We we didn't uh, we didn't perform at this time. And, and for this population, it was um, the diploid uh, hybrid. Yeah, it was diploid. What your in your study? Yeah, uh, hybrid were uh, diploid. Yes. Yes. It was a diploid population only. And because it's it's easier to work on diploid yes. on diploid hybrids dipole, at diploid level for genetic student. And do you think it can be it could be a problem to validate the QTL on a triploid hybrid? Or so genetic analysis of triploid it's always more complicated because you have to because it's not you have three copies of the same genes or, or, yes, or, or of each chromosome. So it's more difficult to, to study the impact of uh, one allele. Uh, if you, you have two, two, two against one or three different alleles, 
it's quite more complicated to work at triploid level for genetic analysis. There's a question from Dominique um, regarding plantain. So do you plan to conduct this type of study on plantains with a group of uh, Angelique Dont and Kojo, uh, for which the genetic variability is extremely low? Plantain. And uh, second question: What would be the difference or the differences? Knowing that we have protocols, or let's say, developed within RTB foods protocols to finally characterize the quality uh, in cooking. So, um, Dominique, you may have something in mind here, maybe a bit more precise. But any plan for uh, studies on yeah. plantain, Sebastian? Yeah, yeah. So that's something we or interesting to, to do in the future, um, to perform something, yes, yeah, the same things, but not on the same traits. For example, on starch quality, I'm not sure uh, I use uh, the right words. Um, or the transformation ability of uh, plantain fruits. Uh, so yes, that's something we want to do. Um, but uh, and that I think with new markers, uh, for example, GBS uh, could be used to see some differences between the plantains. That's what's not possible before that uh, with all the genetic markers. Uh, so yes, we want to do. Uh, we now just have to found some funds to perform that and some uh, partnership and to to really have uh, a great um, can i say that uh, reflection uh, on which genotypes we will use uh, and for that uh, we have to work with angelique angelique don't groups uh, to to include the results on the the genomic uh, uh, heterozygosity, and also with some qualitation uh, to have some contrasted uh, genotype and to know what we have to, uh, to genotype. Is it, a, is it what you have in mind, uh, Dominique? Yes, uh, the, the RTB food project is showing that uh, not only starch is important, but also all the the parietal compounds and uh, maybe the equation, the ideal equation is between uh, pectin, amyl, uh, starch and amylose contents to, to have a good response about uh, texture and preference. And uh, maybe we need to analyze uh, these three components for the next uh, project or the next activity that we will do mm -hmm. because they are really linked to the preference of the consumer and uh, pectin is something new and maybe there is a very strong genetic component on it and really the preference is really linked uh, to this uh, pectin composition and pectin uh, level in the fruits or in the roots and tuber. Great, so that's why we have... Something that we can plan together for the next project. Yeah, and that's why we have to work together uh, breeder geneticist with a uh, qualitician with uh, people working on genomic. It's a transversal uh, study. Yes. The, the problem is always that we are working more on staple food and cooking banana than fruits, banana for export. There's two groups in Syrah, one for the export, fruit export and one for staple food for for the for the African people, and uh, we are not really linked at the moment. Yes, but as you see, uh, I worked on plantain when I began to work on uh, on banana, and after that, I work on uh, dessert banana for export. And now, uh, I'm I'm coming back to plantain, so it's possible to good news to to, <laughs> to work on on, the, on both uh, both bananas. Excellent. So before we close, we have a final comment or question from Didier. Yes, um, it's, it's, um, it's more a, a comment uh, uh, concerning the link between uh, uh, dessert banana and, uh, and cooking banana. Um, 
Sirad has a uh, Sirad genetics have a, a good advantage, a, a great advantage because they are the same people who are worked on the said banana and uh, and plantain, and uh, taking advantage of that and uh, all things that we that uh, we did in in, in Cameroon with the Gerard team, I think that uh, it will be easier for 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 for, for us to 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 transfer uh, the 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 result obtained on RTB food on pain. It's just a comment. To study if this result could be uh, usable usable for plantain, but I think some of them, yes, could be really interesting for banana for plantain breeding also. Well, I think we'll end up on this very positive uh, <laughs> sentence. Thank you, Sebastian. Thanks for your time, and thanks for accepting this uh, invitation. Our invitation. Um, it was a pleasure. It <laughs> so this uh, webinar will be available on our YouTube channel. So as soon as it's ready, I will share the link with you so that you can also share within your own network. So we see that there's a lot of opportunities to build bridges between our teams. Uh, and the RTB food team is um, spread all over Africa. So we have uh, uh, capacities. We have, um, yes, scientists working on plantain, as did you mention, in Cameroon. We have others working in Côte d'Ivoire. So I think uh, there's a lot of uh, opportunities to take advantage of our previous activities and results on both banana uh, banana dessert and cooking banana for the in the future to, to start start thinking about new new projects and new uh, yes new opportunities. So thanks very much and um, and uh, yes we see we look forward for new opportunities to collaborate. Um, so within two, uh, in two weeks time, so we'll have um, a presentation from work package free colleagues and Karim Amegar in particular, who will be sharing with all of us the main steps in practice of the RTB foods promoted approach for the estimation of repeatability and representativeness of um, NIRS and hyperspectral imaging measurements. So this should be a very practical and hands-on presentation for those of you who are interested in the development of high throughput prediction models. Uh, and it will be based on, a, on, a, on an example, um, practical example in Nigeria with IITA and on our CRI teams. Thanks everybody for joining today's webinar. Take care and uh, we see each other in two weeks time. And congratulations, Sebastian, for this interesting study. Goodbye.